Now, Shahid Javed Burki is a former vice president of the World Bank, and he has also served as the finance minister of Pakistan, and he is currently chairman of the Shahid Javed Burki Institute of Public Policy in Lahore, and he joins us now from Washington. Thanks so much for coming on the program. Um, first of all, for the global economy, how is what we uh, are living through now compared to anything that you have seen from an economic point of view? I haven't seen anything like this, and I have been in this business for more than 50 years. This is without any precedence. Uh, today, uh, the United States is going to announce new numbers on unemployment, and it's going to be uh, very, very high, much higher than was the case uh, during the uh, 1930s Depression. So it's going to be a very, very difficult time. Uh, I am, since my business is development economics and I was at the World Bank for a long time, I'm very worried about the impact on developing countries, particularly uh, countries uh, that are poor, uh, that are heavily populated and don't really have uh, the health systems that can take care of and pandemic such as this. Okay. So it's very okay. worrying. So, so given that concern that you have, uh, what would your advice be for uh, world, the World Bank right now and, and other central banks around the world to tackle the pandemic? Uh, the World Bank, along with regional banks with which it is associated, Asian Development Bank, Inter-American Development Bank and so forth, they have enough reserves in order to bring about, uh, bring about a significant increase in their lending. Uh, they also have very experienced staff, people who have worked in other countries and seen both uh, successes and failures. So they need to completely switch from their normal uh, lending to something that is focused on developing health systems and providing relief to the poor and uh, uh, advising countries uh, uh, what to do in order to handle the crisis that is just around the corner for them. Now, you are in America, uh, the epicenter of COVID-19, uh, 33 million Americans out of work. Do you think that this will trigger a reform in, in the welfare sector there? Uh, trigger reform where? In the welfare, in the health system. Uh, the World Bank is very well equipped to deal with these crises. When I was at the bank, we dealt with a number of uh, situations not as grim and grave as the one that they are faced with now. But it has very experienced staff. It has also uh, facilities uh, that they can use in order to lend money, which does not create a burden for those who borrow. So there is uh, there's a lot of experience in the bank. There's a lot of experience in... In, in another institution which is located in Washington, that is the Inter-American Development Bank, and then Manila-based Asian Development Bank. What they need to do, which is something that they don't do very often, is to work together, to collaborate with one another. Uh, I worked in China for eight years when I was at the bank, and we worked very closely with Asian Development Bank. Uh, the World Bank has very competent analytical capabilities, and uh, those were used by the Asian Development Bank, and they concentrated much more on lending than on analytical work, and they depended, they depended on the bank, on the World Bank for, an, for analysis. Now, a question on Pakistan via the world's uh, fifth most populous country, a third of which live on daily wages. As a former a finance minister of Pakistan. What's your opinion of the way Imran Khan has been handling the pandemic? Imran has uh, 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 adopted a system which is very different from the one that uh, Narendra Modi has done in India. Uh, in India, they went in for a national lockdown. And my view is that that was, that was a mistake because it created enormous amount of unemployment uh, in the urban areas, in large cities. Uh, India has uh, something like uh, 20 to 30 million people 
who leave their homes in the villages and go and work in large cities such as Mumbai and Calcutta. Uh, those people were thrown out of work. And India took the incredible decision to uh, stop all rail services. It has the largest railway system in the world. So people were just stranded. I think Imran Khan learned from that experience and decided not to go in for a national lockdown. And yesterday, he has a group that meets uh, every other day. And they decided to go in for uh, not a lockdown, but an East uh, situation where individual uh, provinces will be allowed to do what they think is best for them. So I think that's the right approach. Shahid Javed Burki, thank you so much for joining us on the News Hour. We really appreciate your time and your analysis.